Let's show that moment um, that you just referenced in SOT 23. In Nikki Haley's campaign launch video sounded like a woke Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light ad talking about how she would kick in heels. At the first debate, she said that only a woman can get this job done. That's what she said. After the third debate, when I criticized Ronna McDaniel after five failed years of leadership of this party and criticized Nikki for her corrupt foreign dealings as a military contractor, she said that I have a woman problem. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. This is the problem. Using identity politics more effectively than Kamala Harris is a form of intellectual fraud. And it actually needs to end. There's our donor puppet masters wielding their puppet right up here tonight. This is how this game is played. The puppet masters put up their puppet, and I reject the use of identity politics in this party. It has been a cancer coming from the left, and I'm sick and tired of the double standards the people of this country are too. Having two X chromosomes does not immunize okay, you from thank criticism. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Governor Haley, would you like to respond? <laughs> no. It, it's not worth my time to respond to him. <laughs> mm. By the way, there, 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 there was a reference in there to the Ruthless Gang. Yeah, <laughs> it was your podcast on which she said, I think he's got a girl problem. Yep. Yep. Now, listen, uh, that has been the, the marquee attraction in all of these debates is what Ramaswamy is trying to do with Nick. Nikki laid him out in the first couple of debates. Obviously, uh, Vivek wanted to turn the tide on that and he was very aggressive. You know, there's just an element of a P.T. Barnum routine with him where I think it was summarized in one of his last answers when he starts talking about 9-11 and he's talking about, you know, all kinds of sort of conspiracy theories. Uh, we'll play that in one sec. My job and, and, and all of that. And it's it's very hard. He makes some points there that are very worth listening to if you're a conservative voter. But it's always overshadowed by this P.T. Barnum routine that verges on complete insanity. And he takes away his his authentic pitch. I don't know what the demographic is that's looking for like J6 as an inside job and 9-11 was a conspiracy and all of these, niche. these things. That he's Fair to say about. niche. <laughs> very niche. Very. Certainly does not reflect the primary electorate writ large and, and definitely not in Iowa. Um, so I, I don't know really what he was grasping for so there. Here, I mean, that line about she will send your kids to die so she can have yeah. a bigger house. I mean, that- Wow, that is below the belt. I mean, that is like, look, we raise the issue and it's fair to ask about, as I did at the top, whether she's too beholden to the banks and the billionaires and is gonna push an agenda to, to please them. But what he said there is absolutely impugning her moral character, her integrity, her, you know, her her life as a Christian. No, no Christian, no good person, no, like would ever do such a thing. That's really- like it's taking it, ratcheting it up to the nth degree. Although I do think, on the other thing, he had a fair point about the Republican Party is not about identity politics. Yeah, and that's I, I agree. I agree. When she I said on your when problem. she said on the program, Josh, I think he's got a girl problem. She said it because he attacked Ronna McDaniel's, he attacked Kristen Welker, and he attacked um, her, Nikki Haley, yeah. at the beginning of the last debate. And she said, I think he's got a girl problem. She said it kind of with a fun vibe. You know, you could make the argument she was just being playful, but you know, I, I'll be the first to say we are not immune from criticism just because we do have the double X chromosome. The lady parts do not get you some sort of immunity from attacks in a presidential race. So I agreed with his point there, but then of course it just goes too far. That doesn't mean she's exactly. gonna kill children so she can have a bigger house. I, it, you're entirely right. And a very good point, one worth examining and getting a response to, again, totally overshadowed by complete insanity. I mean, no, it, mm -hmm. this was this was Donald Trump's U.N. representative. You know, I mean, that's a hell of a thing to, by extension, accuse the Trump administration of, which is essentially what it was that he was doing there. You can disagree with Nikki Haley's foreign policy all you want, but it happens to be pretty well-reasoned based on somebody who spent an awful lot of time thinking about these sort of things. To reduce that to killing your kids because she wants a bigger house is nonsense. It's the kind of thing that you, you, you hope doesn't show up on a stage in Iowa, New Hampshire for the next two debates. If that means that Vivek's not there, so be it. But that that's not serious discussion at all. You know, part of what Vivek was doing reminded me a little of Trump. I mean, I've said he's kind of like a Trump wannabe. 
But there's only one Trump. There can only ever there be one only Trump. There is only one Trump. It, you're, you're exactly right. There is only one Trump. And you know what Trump is? He's funny. He's, He's funny. funny, Josh. He raises this sort of thing and it's it's outrageous. It's ridiculous, but he kind of does it with a wink. It and doesn't like feel as mean. Right, right. He, it's like he's part of the crowd making commentary on everything else. He breaks that fourth wall when he does it. With Vivek, it's it's like he's just shot out of a cannon and it's the kind of guy that you, you know, if you, you're cornered at a party with, you're just kind of trying to slink away as fast as you possibly can. <laughs> You, you know, know what? Th that's the irony of that. But that's the true irony of Vivek is that I've known him for a long time. He's yeah. totally charming. One on yeah. one, you'd love to have drinks with him at a cocktail party. And I, the Vivek I know doesn't say these things. I, I think this is an appeal to a sliver of the Republican base with whom he's getting more and more popular. And he's kind of leaning into it. You know, he, he's I, I, he, yeah. it's like, you know, you see the positive clicks or the positive likes on your tweet, and then you get kind of radicalized toward whatever it is they're liking. It seems like that's what's happening. It's a, it's a reflection back of the way too online, right? You're entirely right. The subsect of the population that believes the things that he's talking about is so small. It's very intense and it's very loud if you spend all of your day on X, right? And I understand if you spend all your day on X, you probably get the impression that there's a much bigger constituency to talk about these kind of things than ultimately exists. But, you know, at some point you'd think he would get, if he's actually trying to play to win this thing, he would take a broader view and be like, well, you know, I, I peaked somewhere in August at double digits. I'm now at like four or 5% real danger of not making a debate stage from here. I mean, that could have been his last performance right there. I would think you'd want to broaden this out and and showcase some of the things you just talked about. I've known Vivek too. He this is a charming guy. He's a very smart yeah. guy. He's a thoughtful guy. And I think what we've been critical on on the Ruthless Variety program is that that guy hasn't shown up yet at yeah. all. And it's really there have been hints of it. Even at the beginning of last night's debate, I was like, oh, you know, because my question to him on electability was all about how he's like, I I joked like the Sybil of debate candidates. Like, I don't know what I'm getting. Well, who is it? It's the calm, nice one, or it's the really mean personal insulting one. And last night he kind of started off kind of nice. I was like, oh, we've got second debate, Vivek. I don't believe in yeah. personal insults and these people are good people. And then it was like, eh, 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 psycho killer, you're fat, Chris Christie, which is by the way, what he was kind of saying in Stop 14, take a listen. I think we just learned something from Chris Christie. We hold learned on, three on, things. Go we ahead. learned three things right there. First of all, Chris Christie also doesn't know what provinces in eastern Ukraine he actually wants us to fight for. Chris, your version of foreign policy experience was closing a bridge from New Jersey to New York. Yeah. So do everybody a favor. Just walk yeah. yourself off that stage, enjoy a nice meal, yeah. and get the hell out of this yeah, place. Let, let me tell you. Mm. <laughs> Whoopsie. I mean, to your point, like, listen, I know this isn't nice. I'm not trying to argue this was nice by Trump, but Trump gets up there. He's got a whole bit he does on Chris Christie's weight. And yeah. as I said in that debate last night, Chris Christie has given as good as he's gotten from Donald Trump. You heard the list of, I could have kept that list going for, you know, three more minutes. Yeah. So Donald Trump doesn't like him. Christie doesn't like Trump either. Donald does this thing on the campaign trail where he's like, it's not nice to call him fat. That's not nice, sir. See, I didn't say it. I didn't say, it. he said it. Stop, don't call him a fat pig. That's not nice. We're not, okay. I am not advocating this language in any way, shape or form, but he tries to do it with some humor. It yeah. does, ha it land differently than if you do it with, and get the hell off this stage. You know, it just feels a little meaner and a little bit more alienating for the audience. Yeah, also just totally disconnected. I mean, whatever you think of Chris Christie, he has a resume to be on that stage. The only person who doesn't is Ramaswamy, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. he's making an argument that nobody else is making. Ramaswamy really isn't. I mean, it, the only arguments that he's making that nobody else is, is like real conspiracy niche stuff. And so he obviously should be on that stage. But I think throughout all of this, you begin to separate the wheat from the chaff and you start to see that if anyone is going to have the capability of challenging Donald Trump seriously, and it might be after South Carolina in the context of like a Super Tuesday at the beginning of March, it's going to require consolidation down to one person. And, and it's quite obviously going to be Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley. Debt. Mm. 
You can go to bed thinking about it, wake up thinking about it, eat your lunch thinking about it all day. High interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. And insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. The system winds up trapping you in debt. Donewithdebt.com can be a lifeline. I have spoken in the past about my own experience with debt back in law school. It was bad. Well, donewithdebt.com has a new strategy to help erase your debt faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Here's what they can do for you. Analyze all the debt options you qualify for, minimize interest rates, cut medical bills, and reduce debt without bankruptcy and without a loan. But you need to hurry. Some debt solutions are time sensitive. Go to done, D-O-N-E, with debt, D-E-B-T, Dot com. Find out how, how easy they can make it and find out if it's right for you. Donewithdebt.com. Donewithdebt.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.